So thank you so much for that. Um, so really, I mean, gosh, this is just clearly, you love singing this, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Tell me, tell me about Susanna and more, more to the point, tell me where she is uh, in this scene. Tell me what kind of a woman she is. Tell me what feeds into your storytelling right now. Yeah, so Susanna is this young, beautiful girl from a rural town in Tennessee, quite a conservative town. And she is just um, a free spirit exploring the world. And I think um, right before this, she has come back from a square dance and danced with um, the Reverend. And I think that she is admiring the beautiful night, but then thinking about all the possibilities outside of her small-minded town and really um, how big the world can be. But does she maybe miss the valley one day? that exact place. It was in Georgia, not in Tennessee, but I grew up in that conservative valley. Um, and those little moments of, of thinking about leaving that were both joyous. And also, I knew that I would miss it on some level. So I, I certainly connect with this particular aria in this way. Um, I would love to repeat that one more time. Oh, it's quite melancholy at moments. Yeah, yeah, and I actually have a question for you uh, in the later bit as to what you think the composer is giving you. Um, but I'd love to start back at the beginning. I will tell you the truth. The only time that I had any sort of notes of, okay, I wish their musical notes, I should say, were on the very first phrase, because I'll, I'll tell you the truth. The, it is appropriate for this to have a little bit of scoop, a little bit of, of that, but it edged on enough that I wasn't entirely sure of the pitch. Once you sure. start. Just on that very first one. It wasn't an issue after that, but it was just on that first one. So I, I just to be vocally pedantic, I would love for you to begin this again um, and give me Think of it less as a vocal scoop and more as almost a diction scoop. Uh, I, I, I said, think of it less as a vocal kind of scoop effect and more as uh, an effect of the diction. So, ain't it a pretty night? You know, use that pretty, use yeah. that into that bloom that I think you're looking for. And I can just see what that would be. Okay, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Now, I want you to take a little, if this is really, there's nothing under you, right? This is where you get to be the conductor, right? <laughs> So I really just revel in the joy that she's feeling right there. She's literally in the score, it says they both laugh. You know, a couple of like literally just measures before you start singing. But she's coming out of this, this smile, this you know, elation. So take a little time. You have permission, I promise you. Take a little bit more time right there and enjoy that pretty nice. Okay? Great, great. How do you feel about that? Like, what does that, does that affect the storytelling for you in any way? Um, yeah, I think that, I mean, just starting it out when there's nothing under it is so daunting as a singer, um, at least for me. Um, but I think that it so makes sense with the storytelling. It's kind of that moment of like, it is so beautiful today. It is gorgeous out tonight. This night is so different than others. 
well enough mm -hmm. measure that you start where it's the single note in the orchestra, that's where it changes from this giggly laughter kind of movement that she's having to the exhalation that goes into the next subject of ain't it a pretty night? Yeah. You know, so so it's important to be able to connect that and to give the audience, even in an audition situation where you might be exerting this for an aria, to give that moment to really just feel it, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, I, I give you permission, I ask you to. <laughs> okay, so I, I'd love to just keep on going and really the, the, the only thing that I really have to talk to you about is uh, when you have things like tenudos or moments where you're going to stretch it. I actually think you can take back that stretch up just a little bit more and land in the space that you want to be in in terms of timing, rather than going up to the note and holding it. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. So that's one thing to think about. And I will just stop you. I, if, if I feel that I need to, I wanted to just go ahead and tell you at the top of the second page where you have that it might fall right down out and it's that first time where it gets you above the staff really take your time you can stretch that a little bit yeah if you have permission <laughs> i promise so why don't we just go ahead and start um maybe at the six four after i made a pretty night just going into the sky is so dark and velvet line. right back up to that that little bit that it might fall right out of heaven truly that it might fall right down out of heaven give that right down some emphasis on those because that'll help slow you down a little bit and give you just a little extra time to prepare the space for that that upper stuff yeah where would be great for you to start would it maybe the sky scenes of the Mars? What'd you say? Um, I was asking, what, where would be good to start before that for you? Yeah, sure. This guy seems so heavy with stars. Perfect. The sky seems so heavy with stars. Having lived through a pandemic at this point, I am building back my my breath control. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm feeling you on that. So, no worries whatsoever. That's just something to think about. But this is good for every other time when there's a tenuto written in or a fermata or something like that. So let's keep on going. And um, yeah, yeah, let's just keep on going. Are all of a sudden, because we, we've been in eighth notes and sixteenth notes, your yeah. word, 
measure leading up. Why all of a sudden when we get to Nashville and Asheville and Knoxville do we have quarter notes? Why, why, does, why does the composer drag it out? That's a great question that I totally have not thought about before. Um, maybe because she's from this like small town in Tennessee and those are the big places. Those are places that she aspires to go to. So kind of stressing those that they're like out in the distance somewhere. Absolutely. I, I kind of envision it as, you know, when you talk about New York City, you know, if, if you're from a small town anywhere and you talk about New York City, it gets a little extra excitement behind it. So, you, I love that excitement, these glamorous places of Nashville and Asheville and Knoxville to really have some life in, in that that particular bit. So can we go back to those big blue stars called Peep Down? Which, by the way, I have Peep Down. I don't know if Reach is enough. I don't know Reach Down, my bad. No worries. No worries. First time and you did it this time, so I wasn't sure if it was another score that happened to have a different word. But um, <laughs> let's just go from there. And yeah, show me how glamorous somebody like Susanna would think that that is. Yeah? Think the stars and I wanna keep down and see you. One of the, the places um, and the smell of pine straw. You've got this too. Of extra time going up to pine straw and once again do it in the diction smell of pine straw make it hear the action of smell in the word smell yeah. Does that make sense? okay give me that for the sound of crickets and the smell of pine straw Go ahead and stop because we're, we're coming to the end of time but the reason i'm asking for a little more setup with those kinds of effects is because there's a reason that the composer put them in right yeah. there's a reason it's not just because you're up on a high note and doing a beautiful you know portamento down to a, you know a lower note that's 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 what we think of yeah. when it comes to, when it comes to the storytelling there's a reason that there is a tenuto there. And 
for me, when I'm really working on things like this, I would say she's thinking of that now. You know, she's imagining that she's having a visceral reaction, which then basically means that you take a little extra time. So just continue thinking of those kinds of things. You have an incredible talent when it comes to singing and to storytelling. You've done so much wonderful work on this. I cannot thank you enough. Just keep on taking those steps forward to really understand exactly who she is and why she is singing what she is singing, why the composer has put things in there like Nashville and Asheville and Knox, that kind of thing. You go into that detail work and I promise you, you're going to be doing the good work, right? Yeah, awesome. Thank you so much, Jamie. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for all your feedback. My pleasure as well. My pleasure as well. Thank you so, so much. Thank you. Go ahead and send Savannah out whenever she's ready. By the way, guys, my, my apologies, but my, my, my kitty River is definitely joining us in uh, the local life today. So if you hear a little meow coming, that's, that's her and I apologize. <laughs> If you guys don't follow Jamie on Instagram yet, you better start doing that because we see a lot of kitty on Instagram too. Bless you. That was awesome. Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm great. How are you doing? excited. <laughs> <laughs> well, please just announce who you are and what you're singing and then have some fun. I'm Savannah Gordon and accompanied by Jeremy Vigil as well. We will be performing Chori Mori Fook from Rosalka. <laughs> Absolute favorite characters to sing. And so, oh, oh my gosh, have you sung the role? No, <laughs> <laughs> but I watched you do it. <laughs> it is so much fun. I love any chance I get to sing a witch. You know, any chance, basically. Um, so, <laughs> bravo. So, it's. A strophic aria. She repeats a lot of things. So I really feel like it's a ripe situation for you to infuse more character. 
right? Um, I will say in the couple of times that I've done the role, I gotten to, you know, especially like at the end, you know, it sounds like nice and singery. And then I'm like, you know, like, you know, adding in some extra flavor because we get the chance to do that because we're the witch, right? I want to just give you the flavor in whatever direction you really feel. Now, the two shows that I've done have been two very different witches. One of the Met was this, you know, the antique grandmother looking thing, you know, the, the very steampunk kind of thing. The one that I did at San Francisco was like a forest goblin. Like she, she was, we literally took a Sharpie to my teeth. I saw you post that on Instagram. <laughs> you know, so, a variety of different ways but I will tell you one of the best pieces of advice that I ever got with the role was somebody pointing out that in the story of Rusalka there has to be a character that is the evil character you know the, the prince becomes that person he right. starts off with the prince the love interest and by you know the end of intermission he's already an abusive and terrible um but Yuji Baba really does have to be the evil in, in the context of the show. So I just wanted to put that into your head because I certainly walked into it going, okay, this could be, you know, Mad Madam Mim from uh, Sword in the Stone. You know, this could just be delightful. And I think there are moments of that and they definitely exist in this particular area. But that being said, you, you're, you're evil. Don't forget that, okay? Yeah. So. Let's go ahead and go back to the beginning. And at this point, you know what's happening, right? Yes, I'm making um, Rosaka's potion to turn her human. Right, right. So you're you're mixing it up. You're you're a mixologist at this point. So <laughs> a magical mixologist. Yes. So let's go into the thing. So I will say one of the different things that I was really told from the very beginning. Like a very legato, churimuri, and then use the K at the end of fuk to really map it. Yeah. So let's let's try that at the very beginning. I might stop you from for some diction things. Um, that is just difficult. Yeah. <laughs> We're not used to it, so I, 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 I was catching something, so I'll stop you, I, if, if that's okay with you, I'll stop you to, to correct some things if I hear something. Yes, please do. <laughs> okay. I was trying to press the, the button and it didn't work for me. Um, so, <laughs> you got to get that in there. So there's an F sound that happens before that. It's written in as a V. So, Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So number one, that and number two, use that octave down the bila para staff asluk to give yourself a little bit of a trampoline. Go ahead and prepare the space above. You've got plenty of space above that. I'm promising you. So prepare that space. The kind of think of that like prime <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, really give yourself that and, and use that that F S T look to really launch you, okay? Okay. Just go right from the B La Para. B La Para Stars look. Cut the curve with the Machi. Does it come back to Luce? Touchy, how could you ask that to Luce? Great, 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 great. 
Okay, so then you have kaka krve. It lives on the R, like on a rolled R. Kaka krve drachi. Yeah? So don't. Yeah, I gave you that. <laughs> and then when you go into the desert cup, actual water. So when for us mezzos, when we're singing some chesty kind of stuff, it helps to think a little more west in our mouth position than north-south. Now the north-south works really, really well for us when we're going up high. Dropping the dog, creating the space, all that. But when I'm doing warm-ups to warm up my chest stuff, I literally sing on tha, 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 tha. And that kind of east, west, like wide kind of thing really helps in that chest stuff. So, does it come extra uh, yeah. So, and, and don't be afraid to toy around with the chest stuff in this. There's nothing that's going to hurt you. Just, you know, take it to your voice teacher and, and do things conservatively in that way. But this is a really great place to really toy around with this. So, give me a curve, This is perfect. Rucha. You know? All right. like you have you have the space above it i know that you do so i want you to prepare the space of it above it so scotch think think a little more north south in that scotch scotch is a little more scotch scotch yeah yes and here take a good breath and just prepare that space above scotch big ah ah kind of vowel Scotch, my Marco, scotch, I scotch. Okay, whatever time you need and don't scoop up to it, okay? Okay. Okay. So let's just go from scotch, my Marco, scotch, I scotch, and give me that scotch, I scotch. Okay. Scotch, my Marco, scotch, I scotch. I don't believe you on that G Scotch my Marcos because I, I don't think you need the scoop up. In fact, I think the scoop up is actually pulling you down a little bit. Okay. Think of it as coming from the top and landing on that note. Okay. Just without the piano right now, give me Scotch my Marcos Scotch us Scotch just without the piano. Scotch to me one more time really just live on that top note a little bit feel good about it yeah. <laughs> yeah. Scotch, Scotch, Scotch. great I, there's still the tendency to come from underneath and i really want you to think about coming from above i promise you it's going to make it easier and I also promise you that you absolutely have the voice to do it. You have the notes above. You don't have to scoop up to get to that. But just prepare that space before going in. Think of that drop jaw before you do it. And I promise you it's there. Okay. Well, why don't we go back to Scotch Boy Marco, Scotch, Scotch, and go ahead. Okay. Scotch Boy Marco, so once once you've gotten away from the top of the staff and above the staff, don't worry about modifying the, the vowel anymore. 
Scott, my Marco Scott, a Scott. And it is kind of a Scott. You don't have to worry about opening that up there because that will actually make it harder in the middle for you. <laughs> so <laughs> um, that's great. And let's skip on to the next verse of Turi Muri Fuk. We've only got about three minutes left anyway. Okay. But here, I'm going to give you the challenge of, she's just saying abracadabra, right? right? So just have fun with it. Like, boy with it, don't sing it the exact same way both times, okay? Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Churi Muri Oh, Oh, we can be in the second verse. Just kidding. <laughs> yes, sorry. Okay, yes. Churi Muri Fook. Churi Muri Fook. Nelle Kese Vyasi Shuk. I believe that you could probably do something even more different. Okay. Like, if you wanted to get a little flirtatious with the second one, I'm so here for that. So in that case, you know, turn into Eartha Kid for a, mo a moment, you know, churi muri fuk, churi muri fuk, you know, like give a little, you know, something. Oh, yeah. But push the envelope into so many different areas in your own practice time and figure out what feels right to you. This is your bar bet. This is your ball game. You're the one who gets to have fun and determine whatever that looks like, right? So start over one more time. I'm not going to stop you this time because I want to keep on going, but have fun with it, okay? Okay. <laughs> person for Czech will catch you on is the, it's the weird it's it, for, for everybody who is listening to this and doesn't actually have the score in front of them, in front of them it's V A R D L O we don't get to the actual vowel until the end so it's weird but Vrdl is what it is it's weird and very weird it's yeah. one of the things that I had to take and just separate it from the music entirely for a little while. There are actually a couple of points in this score that you have to do that as an English speaker who's not used to that. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's very, very weird, but it is exactly what is written. Yeah, exactly. So just take take that in your, your your practice time but since it actually repeats itself that's one wow. that you definitely especially if you're going to carry it into auditions or concerts mm -hmm. probably want to make sure you get that in. okay let's skip on to the churimuri fuk churimuri fuk that just finished it up things in there you're gonna have uh uj animuk and the an mm -hmm, uj and the ani is almost not quite but almost quite when you say manana you have the n with the tilde in there it's similar to that ani it you, you taste it in the middle of your tongue so it's not ani it's ani ani yeah exactly exactly okay um there is, uh, Andrew, remind me, and I will look it up and email you. There is a wonderful um, companion uh, translation IPA, that kind of thing, for this specifically that really helps um, 
uh, explain all the, the weird, tricky things. Okay. Um, cool. Really, yes, so. We've just been um, guessing, so that would be fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, spent a long time. I, told, I based everything off of your video where you were the mad scientist. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you. I that as <laughs> but yeah, I'll, Andrew, if you email me and remind me, I, yeah. I'll, I'll make it. I think it's Timothy. I'm pretty sure that's the author. He is um, really fantastic. I've had both Czech speakers who are addiction specialists and uh, the one at the Met both really, really recommended it. So I can highly recommend it to you. But cool. Beautiful, beautiful job. Seriously, thank you so much. And just have fun with this one, okay? Thank you. Thank you so much. Great job, Savannah. Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm great. I have that dress. You do? I sure do. Yeah. <laughs> Twinsies. I'm so happy about that. That's the greatest compliment. So nice to meet you. Uh, I'm Kenna McWilliams, and this is Jeremy Vigo, my collaborative pianist. And today we will be singing Things Change Joe from Little Women. But what? 
Aha. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, you, Ohio, you guys are showing up today. <laughs> Seriously, you guys are some of the strongest group of singers that I've been working with uh, in the last few months. I just, I, I'm, I'm really, my, my, my hope for the future of opera is solidly in right now. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, once again, bravo on the English diction. Whichever teacher is out there, like, taking a listen to this and doing uh, the work on that, I just thank you so, so much. And I thank you for the work you've done as well. Because once again, here is a, a presentation that I wouldn't have to look at the super titles. Which, quite honestly, considering the range that Mark put into this is impressive. <laughs> it's really impressive. I mean, gosh, he has you all over the map. <laughs> yes, yeah, very low <laughs> for me and then very high. For yeah, well, you handle it really, really beautifully. Um, so I, I will admit I've never actually seen Little Women, the opera, so I, I don't know exactly what precedes this, but I can absolutely imagine what precedes this. It feels like a very, uh, it's, it's kind of ironic that the next singer is doing oh, les couleurs, <laughs> yeah. This feels like a very uh, Charlotte and uh, Sophie kind of uh, conversation, or maybe the one that they should have had. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I mean, tell me about Meg's relationship with Joe. How much uh, younger do you imagine Joe to be? Or, you know, like, tell me, just tell me. So Meg is the oldest sister. And because her mother is busy and her father has been away, she has really been the one who like kind of enforces all the rules wants to be the role model, is prim and proper. So basically the exact opposite of Joe. And I think that what is so tender about this moment that comes right as I sing it, is I'm kind of consoling Joe. I'm saying, just because I'm falling in love and I'm going to go and get married, it doesn't mean that I'm not going to love you. Yeah. Yeah, I, there's the, the thing that's really interesting about this, the thing that I think would really, I, I want to encourage further steps forward for you with, is that there are so many shifts in, in the conversation, particularly in the first two pages. Um, and you have to ask, as a storyteller, why? Is it difficult to have this conversation? Is it difficult because it's difficult for you or is it difficult because it's difficult for Joe? And is there any frustration that leads to this? Or is it all like a maternal kind of, you know, soothing? You know, it, it, there are so many options when it comes right down to it because you can't think in, in a serious way, right? So I'm going to encourage you to really, really think to really understand where those shifts happen really label what has happened right. because you'll, you'll work with a director someday if you ever do this role and that's a conversation that you guys will have but in the meantime you're your own director and so <laughs> you know so for if you take this into auditions or competitions or anything you're the one who is saddled with the job of making the strongest group that particular so let's go back to the beginning and even within, you know, I see, I do love you. Of course I love you. No sweeter sister, no dearer friend. Like I'm already seeing at least one major acting beat chain, you know? Right. So I want to go back to the beginning and I want you to be brave with those beat changes, okay? okay. Okay, okay. Great, 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 great. 
great. I'm already loving it so much. <laughs> Especially when you have a sentence like no sweeter system, no dearer friend. The, the, the important words in there are no sweeter sister, no dearer um, you know, to, to, I really kind of like I was talking about in Ain't It a Pretty Night, when you have these words that are infused with emotion, really give, give them something special, though so no sweeter sense, no friend. At this point, I really think you're probably sweeter, right? Right. So, so give that to us vocally, right? Okay. okay one more time. so good Thank yes. you. yeah so i'm wondering if because our wonderful maestro back there has chords that are held right there's right. not a lot happening underneath you especially like no dearer friend but once i saw him and once he looked at me i can't explain it joe i love you things end no You know, and, and that's that's where it goes to. So I'm wondering, because all of this is preceded by a little note from Marco Damo that says freely. Right. So I'm wondering, have you ever had a conversation that's like this, that's just difficult and you're trying to explain your position and then you say something that's not exactly right, that, that comes out of your mouth and it's in the right direction, but it's the wrong words? Yes. <laughs> happens when I'm getting into that kind of anxious kind of space is that I might roll things together. So but once I saw him and once he looked at me, I can't explain it, Joe. I love you. Things end. Right. You know, it's it, it can kind of have a little extra energy behind it to get to that Oops, I just said things end. Oh, that's not it at all. Things change, you know? Give, let's, let's go from no sweeter sister, okay? No sweeter sister, no dearer friend. But once I saw him, and once he looked at me, I can't explain. In, in hearing this first time you say it, and you get this little uh, orchestral da 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 da, -da. <laughs> right. and it's kind of like that fairy godmother moment where it's like, yes, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yes. that's what I meant. And I think that for her is when it clicks in that not only do is that right, not only is that true for her, but she wishes that. Or life at a later time. So, the whole reason I say this is because I think that it might change how you say things change. 
going forward from that. You know, rather than like, this is a fact, which is kind of where the things end. Oh, I see. This goes into things change go. I'm going to encourage you to, to really use care. This is, this is a, a, a sister that you love. You love probably more than not, but in a different way, right? So give her that love. This is, this is when it's the touching her face and holding it and giving her all the love that you can and building up to the moment where you get to say, I hope that things change for you, you know? Right. Um, gosh, I don't even know where to begin. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay, I can't explain it, Joe. I love you, things in. Is that an okay place to start? Great. Um, I can't explain it, Joe. I love you. of all those little things to do. Okay, I gotta pull it back to be able to crochet. Don't worry about that. Number one, you've got that. You're you're already gonna do it. Use it with what the word does my John mean for a woman who has lived in the forest for Christmas and her parents has has been only on a romantic level for a very long time. Okay. Can you back up? Uh, she loves her mother. Mm -hmm. Yes. She loves her mother, loves her father, her sisters, of course. But what's it?
this really, really beautiful. The only other thing that I would suggest is that, especially when you get into the angels and pilgrims in heaven rejoice, from there all the way until change and oh, I think there's a lot. There's, this is what we This whole section of pilgrims in heaven rejoice, they change. That's a beautiful thing. You're a rosebud in the night, you're a blossom in the morn. You're unmade by that light, and yet more. It, it, it's really beautiful, beautiful text, and I think that it has a lot of happiness behind it. So I would really encourage you to understand that you've done the work, you know the score, and, and put off everything that you're having to think of and just live in that space of glory. Um, Andrew was just telling me that the that you guys were supposed to do this last spring, and that all four of you who were singing today were cast in it. And I just that's one of the reasons I really, really wanted to just hear you sing this. And it deserves this performance deserves a, a space, and I think I've done a beautiful job on this. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Bravo. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Kenna. We have to do a slight, just little switch of our camera for social distancing um, carefulness to a different piano for a different pianist. So that'll take a second, but not too long. While we're doing that, I just wanted to ask Jamie, um, if you are excited about your new album, because I am super excited about your new album, do you want to tell everyone about it? Oh my gosh, yes, yes, the answer is absolutely yes. I'm so excited about it. Um, last summer I had the uh, ridiculous school experience of being able to uh, out at Skywalker Ranch and my Skywalker, yes, I do that place, George Lucas's place, um, to record an album of his music with him and the piano. We had a consistent special week out there doing that. He is not only one of my favorite people and has been since back in college, but he is one of the greatest artists that I have ever done. Um, the music on this album is just phenomenal, and it was in your life as a single do you get to record an entire album of one of your favorite composers music with that composer at the keyboard but some of the music on this album has been recorded before some of it's not um, and so it, it, I, I'm very proud of people so, you know, Whatever, take a look to our album called Unexpected Cat. It's absolutely beautiful. And I have to tell you, Jamie, we are actually, we had opera plans for next semester, but when the world changed, those kind of had to change a little bit. And um, what we are doing in the spring now is a triple bill of small works by Jake Heggy. And one of them is Iconic Legacies. He, I'm so, so happy to hear you say that. I really, really, really am so happy to hear you say that. I remember Jane telling me that he wrote it for Susan Grant. But she did, yeah. On, yeah, she, he did it on a couple of recitals, and then it, it really never got picked up again. Um, one of the reasons he really wanted it on the album, and of course, as soon as I heard the Barbara Bush uh, track, I was like, and yeah, I'm definitely it, singing that one. It's so fantastic. It's so good. So we're doing iconic legacies. We're doing pieces of 9-11, and we are doing Farewell Auschwitz. So uh, that'll uh, be next semester, and I think they're kind of the perfect pieces to keep a really good amount of social distancing among cast members and uh we'll see hopefully we'll be able to perform by then well i am crossing fingers for you guys and if there happens to be a digital capture of that would you do me a favor and send it to the link 
or, or let me know how to watch it, I would Absolutely. love to. Absolutely. Absolutely. Kate Walcher, are you ready to go? Yes. 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 All right. <laughs> I sneeze earlier, and that was me. I'll admit, I'll admit to that. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Hi, my name is Kate Walter, and I will be singing the Ba Aria from Fair Tale. The Ba Aria, I can, I kind of love that. <laughs> I was like, should I sing the whole thing or not? I don't know. We'll just go with it. <laughs> oh, oh, oh! This is my wonderful collaborative artist, Mercy Olson. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Thing is sin. <laughs> anthem. <laughs> so, okay, this aria is a two-page wallop, and it is a two-page wallop because I think of the emotional stakes that are in it, and yeah. how that is, mm -hmm. that story told, how, how, how Massenet told that story. Yeah. So, so tell me, tell me about Charlotte. I, I want to know your impression of who she is. Okay, so she is the eldest of, I forget how many children, but she's the eldest of a group of children, and her mother has recently passed, so I feel like she's kind of taken on that role since her mother is no longer with them, and she is a very responsible young lady and really wants to do everything good for her family and do right by everyone, and which is in part why she married Albert, because she promised her mother, who has now since passed, um, <laughs> that she would marry him even though she has fallen in love with Verter. So she's kind of going back and forth between you know, her duty to her mother and her family and just being this woman in society where she doesn't have much of a choice and her love for this man that she cannot have. And in this scene, it really exemplifies that struggle and 
she's talking to like the one bright <laughs> light in this opera, Sophie, who's like the only happy part of anything. And she's like, I just gotta cry. I, I have to, or else, you know, I just, I, I'm going to die. <laughs> like something inside me is breaking and I cannot, like these tears do me good. I can't, you know, keep them inside any longer because she's been this perfect person and she needs to release some of that. Yeah, absolutely. 1,000% with all of that. <laughs> Might have been a lot of words, but. <laughs> Do you think that in her life she has ever snapped at Sophie? Probably not ever. <laughs> I mean, there, there's this whole chorus bit in the first act where basically everybody's like, we all love Charlotte. Charlotte's the best. <laughs> all, all the children love Charlotte. You know, it's, it's well established in the opera that she is not only a, a well beloved person within the community but that you know she's a very responsible girl and she loves everyone and she's kind of like the so white so, uh, yeah. you know just delightful in every way and I, I imagine for a character like Sophie which like you say is like the only bright light in this <laughs> um, you know she, she's just like all the time you know yeah. um <laughs> somebody like her who has always had this older sister who has just been nothing but love and nothing but encouragement and support and all of that stuff. This woman goes from being this normal, happy self inexplicably being depressed, terrified, and in You know, it, it's and so I say all of that just to say, mm -hmm. you know, that's in, 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 in the, the opera score, I know that the va has an exclamation. Yeah. You know, and all of this is, even if you take your time, you're like, want to do a little French portamento, a very light. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, but it needs to be like blowing up. Okay. <laughs> you cut out there for a second. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, I was I was just saying that it, the volatile Kulemi Lama needs to blowing up at Sophie yeah. because what happens after that, I promise in every age version ever, is Sophie is like laughing at Sophie. Yeah. She loves her. She just yells at her for the first time in her life. Yeah. And with the elephant of damage. It will be good. The tears are hard to a switch right there. Mm -hmm. So let's let's go from that. There are actually just a few things on the second page that I have uh, for you. This score that that you, you said, I, I will tell you, I would encourage you to go look up the opera score and to write in the things that are missing. Because yeah. there are things that are missing. Um, little uh, slurs to indicate where normal portability are and stuff like that. But, I'm going to fill you in on where those are. So let's uh, start from the very beginning. And like, you are Brunhilda at this point, okay. yelling. <laughs> okay. <laughs> then take it back and it's all the Okay. Yeah.
was exactly the, the switch that I wanted. Now, <laughs> French portamenti, let me, let me tell you Yeah, that. I just heard that <laughs> no, you, know, you know what defines a French portamenti, like how, how it functions? Not as well as other kinds. <laughs> it was super simple, and I will tell you the rule. The base is that it's a very light portamento. Okay. It comes in the so, it does it a very long portamento and it happens very very close to the next note okay so the italian type of course yeah. <laughs> all the way down but it's a french wrong. one exactly <laughs> but never ever 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 in a portamento is there ever a slide so keep yeah. that spin going keep that support going and then at the very last second, a tiny light little portamento going. Okay. Okay. Cool. Let's try that. Or what'd you say? I'm so sorry. No worries. I was just saying, let's try it one more okay. time. Okay. Cool. <laughs> just do it one more time this listen this is why i always say thank you at the beginning for being brave because you're basically just doing the work that you would normally be doing in a practice room <laughs> but you're doing it in front of a whole bunch of your peers and this random lady so thank you for star <laughs> so thank you for for being vulnerable number one and thank you for doing the work i am so here for the work that is what i do. <laughs> great Thank you. Totally. Just do it one more time. you instead of ah, live on the V a little bit, yeah. just give a little ah, you know, mm. it's go. It's not go. It's yeah, yeah, stop, go. <laughs> um, and I say, ah, just I'm overthinking it. <laughs> We're going to do it one more time, and no matter if you do or not, that's totally okay totally fine. Just you swear right now that you'll work on it. Yes. 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 Okay, cool. One more time and then we keep going. Okay. Do you want me to keep singing even if I screw it up? Okay. Yep. <laughs> yourself as a cello. I played the cello, so I can do. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so then you know what I'm, you this, what I'm talking about, but yeah. being that little on the bow. Yeah. Kind of, 
that's what I want you to really, really think of in terms of that. Okay. Also, le larme corne. 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 Do me a favor and do the um, the nasal O, but don't go to the M. Not retombe tout. Yeah. Retombe tout. Yeah. Retombe tout. No M. I'm hearing an M still. Retombe. Retombe. There we go. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Love French so much. <laughs> I will tell you the truth. <coughs> it took me of my college years and my HDO to get anywhere close to being comfortable with French. I'm it glad I'm not alone because I'm like, oh. You're not alone at all. You're not alone at all. <laughs> at all at all. And, and for the most part, your French is really very well prepared. Oh, so thank you. <laughs> that was like my biggest fears coming up here and then having Jamie Barton say, your French needs a lot of work. And I'm like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh no, you froze. <laughs> oh no, it's frozen. <laughs> it was going so well. <laughs> It'll come back. Just give it a second here. And now for some smooth jazz. From the the larma con pa, and really think of that cello. Yes, legato. that are in there. Okay. Just <laughs> no one there. The sobs, the sobs. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And just so you know, Okay. <laughs> Oh, the French. <laughs> and the same on the last brise. Le brise. A little, a little pimento there, there too. Um, so let's just go from sa resistance. Okay, I think and add in. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> Is the see? R too rolled? I was worried about that. <laughs> it didn't feel like it was too for for me. Okay, cool. It, okay. It's. <laughs> It's not going to be like an Italian double R, like resistance. You know, <laughs> it happens a, a little flutter at the very tip of the tongue. Okay. Um, but I didn't hear anything. You know, I, I didn't hear anything that bad, so. Okay, thank you. So. Not, oh, give me no, I forgot. Oh, yes, yes. Okay. <laughs>
really quickly. Because I think you're literally the first mezzo in the history of me ever teaching this aria to actually take, I think, just a hair too much time at that fermata. <laughs> Here. So, and what you, the fermata, it just, it wants you to let the bra in the orchestra have a moment and then go. I would have about one beat earlier. Okay. <laughs> At first, when I was practicing it, it wasn't enough, and I was jumping, and now... <laughs> classic, classic. Now you've over-corrected just a little bit. So um, I'm going to be the evil medso and make you go... <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. Yeah. Because she says, and then she repeats, everything breaks. Mm -hmm. I just want to go into the major key. Why, what, what, what is there? And like, you don't have to answer that right now, but I want you to think of that. Okay. Because there's a reason, A, a there's a reason, and B, it flavors how you sing that, <clears throat> that last breeze. Yeah. And, and <laughs> There, there is a, a, a thought, to me, there's a thought of Werther right there. Oh, yeah. You know, he's a complicated guy. He's a depressed guy. He is <laughs> quite literally a suicidal guy, you know? And, and so, yeah. he, you know, and even in her, she's singing about her heart, you know? So there is a, a tie to him. So I just want to, to bring that up because I think that it would really flavor how you sing that last bit, there's a little tiny smile in there. So just okay. think, the okay. last, I'm going to leave this with you because we've run out of time. Okay. Do, do some work on those portamenti. Definitely get into the, the opera store mm -hmm. and make sure you write in where those those slurs are that give you the, the portamenti and then work with your teacher or your coach on how to do those because right now you're losing support in bring, you know, and it just takes practice is all. Mm -hmm takes a little practice but I promise if you keep that sound spinning and you keep that breath supported that part of the is going to feel <laughs> like a natural extension of, of keeping the legato line which is basically what it is but just do that work you sound glorious holy crap the, the top of that aria is better than I could have ever done that oh, oh gosh <laughs> <laughs> So seriously, keep on going. You've got the chops to do it, no question. Oh, Just work with your people on, on how to, to keep that support going. Yeah. Sure you've got those in your score. Yes. Thank you so much. It's been a complete honor. So thank you. My pleasure. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> thank you, Jamie. This has been such an amazing experience and um we're just so grateful. Your spirit is exactly what we needed right now. We've been we've been virtual for a little over a month and starting Monday, we're all back on campus. So all these students are finally starting to arrive right now. And this just feels like the start of something new. I can imagine, um, it absolutely is. And gosh, what a, truly it is a pleasure. I have had such a wonderful time getting Thank you. Do we have time to do a few yeah, questions? Yeah, absolutely. As much time as uh, as you guys have. We have about twenty minutes, y'all. Um, if anybody has any questions, please raise your hand, 
and I will come to you so we are not talking over each other. So um, feel free to raise your hand if anything has come to your mind. It doesn't have to be about vocal technique. It can be about career stuff and being an opera singer and all that jazz. Um, so let me know if you think very hard, so. Uh, oh, I... Nana, did you have a question? I do. Um, okay, when you said raise hand, I did the whole clap and reaction emoji thing. I'm like, I don't think that was the right reaction thing. But yeah. <laughs> you do whatever you want. <laughs> Hi, um, Jimmy Barton. Um, my name is Nana Jenkins. Um, I'm a mezzo soprano as well. And I have a question um, regarding the development. Um, like your... So I wrote down many questions. I'm a person of many questions, but yeah, for one, um, the voice takes uh, time to develop, not just vocal technique, but the body itself. Uh, as a large voice, uh, when did you feel that you were solidified in your voice? And if you're so kind to share, what were some struggles that you had to go through leading up to such points? That's a great question, Nana. Thank you very, very much for, for asking it. Um, to be a thousand percent honest, there is still a, a side of singing where I feel like I'm not entirely solidified. Uh, and that is because I am just now getting to the point in my vocal life where my chords are actually starting to calcify, which is something that, you know, if you guys study vocal pedagogy, you know that that happens at different times for guys and different kind of times for girls. Um, and before that time, that just means that your voice, literally, the chords are still continuing to grow and change. And at the same time, you're going through voice lessons and you're building strength in different areas. So all of that is to say, it will continue to shift. And there will be time where you feel like, why do I sound like a 14-year-old boy going through the change right now? I thought I had figured it out, you know? Um, you're right for a larger voice. I think it happened a little bit later in the process. It's just a little bit longer. Um, I would say that I started feeling like I was more secure in my technique, um, probably around the age of like 27, 28. Um, I had been solidly taking voice lessons since I started college and was going through the Houston Grand Opera program. And it was kind of after that when I was kind of thrown out of the, the, the academic and polishing kind of study situation and thrown into now we pay the bills kind of situation, um, that things started really coming together. I think that it was probably a little bit of the time I made late twenties, early thirties, and things do start to settle a little bit. Um, and then I also think that it was a bit of the necessity. I had to learn the music. I had to pay the bills. And at some point you have to trust that the technique that you've been studying on for years and years is there and it will serve you. Um, but it is something that, that definitely takes a while to get to. And like I said, there are still moments now, especially when I do things that stretch me in a way that is maybe less comfortable, but maybe quite good for me, like bel canto stuff. Um, you know, Adalgisa, Giovanna Seymour, Sada, and Roberta Debra, like all of these sit just like a notch higher than most of everything else I sing. And it's really good for me and it's a pain in the butt. And so every time I approach one of these roles, there is a little bit of shifting where I'm really, I, I'm having to mentally focus on what I'm doing so much more than I have to focus on, you know, other projects. But that being said, it kind of keeps everything in shape and it keeps everything lined up. It kind of forces you to do that. Otherwise you cannot sing it. Um, and so that's why I keep on you know, masochistically putting these things into my schedule. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, the, going back to your question of, uh, you were asking if there were moments of failure or moments of uh, struggle. Um, yeah, so many, way more than I can account for. I can't tell you guys how many auditions I went through that were flops. 
for competitions. I literally did a competition one time where the general director of a company was uh, one of the judges. And it was right when I was trying, right when I was figuring out how to use my chest voice, which for Elsimitsi is a very individual thing and takes a little while to really get comfortable with, I think. And I was in, I was singing Iris Hints Away and I had been listening a lot to the Stephanie Blythe recording, which is fabulous, by the way. And and I was like, it was one of those, like, I was like, I just had somebody, you know, I was just like belting it the entire time, which is not great, but I was figuring it out. And it's just that that's where I was. And the general director of this company who was judging literally wrote on this, this, the score sheet. He was like, I think you should really reconsider if this is the right career for you. You know, and that was a blow. That that really that 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 hit the gut. You know, that that was difficult. But luckily, I still had a good voice teacher. I had good mentors around me that understood that I was, you know, a 25-year-old mezzo going through trying to figure out a larger voice. And it just takes time because there are still roles at this point that I haven't sung because I'm not ready for them yet because my, my voice hasn't gotten to the maturity that I need to get to. Um, I think singing is just about the only thing I have any conservative bone in my body about. And that is in the taking the proper steps along the way to be able to sing those things. Um, but yeah, no, I, I, it's my, my story, I would say, is probably not terribly diff different from most anybody else's story when it comes down to it. I made plenty of mistakes. I definitely biffed it many times. I continue to have those moments on stage because we're humans. We're not robots. We're not recordings. You're going to have nights where your voice just doesn't connect in the same way as it does on your perfect day, you know? So uh, any mistakes or, or moments of less than perfection that you might feel, just understand that those always add up to the perfection when you get there. Because those mistakes, when you're able to have those in your practice room or with your voice teacher or a coach or something like that, that's going through everything that the singers that came before you went through as well. It's part of the process. Thank you. Nana. Totally. Um, any other questions, anyone? I told, we were talking about having this question session the other day, and I said, as long as Nana's here, if someone's going to ask a question. I have a question, too. Sure. Oh. Oh, <laughs> go ahead. Is this Spencer? Yeah. Go ahead, Spencer. Um. Hi, I'm Spencer. I was just wondering when it felt like to you personally when you made it, like as a singer. Oh man, I, I feel like I'm still trying to make it in a way. Like there's always a Mount Everest and if you get lucky enough to have the moment of, of reaching that peak, that I promise you, you always feel like there's another one to, to topple at some point. I would say for me, the moment where I really felt like I made it was when I was part of. Um, that was just, it, <clears throat> to this day, I'm still really <laughs> amazed that I got the song prize as well as the, the main prize and the combination of those two really launched my career. But there was something about walking out on stage and after hearing my name as the, the winner and they Gary to Kanawa giving me this crystal trophy and all of this stuff and my career taking off after that point where I was like, okay, I, I, I feel like at this point, I don't have to fight as hard. Now, I'll tell you the truth. There's a little bit of that. And the, the actual truth is that you do still have to fight. You absolutely do. You still have to do the work because that's actually the fight is continuing the work. And that work never, ever ends. But it's just learning to manage a new set of challenges. Um, 
but I can. I've been lucky in so many ways. <laughs> I, I, I've had experiences that not every singer gets. Uh, a lot of singers work their lives for and they don't get. And so I'm grateful for all of those experiences. But uh, when it comes to where I feel like I, I made it, I think that was the first time where I felt like I could exhale a little bit. Good. Thank Jamie, you. that reminds me of a question that I had um, about, do you have any advice for young singers um, on that that act of learning a new role or even just learning a new song? Yeah. Um, come to mind. Yeah, so you're talking to somebody who was diagnosed within the last couple of years with ADD. So my process for a long time was just really it was it was full of stress is what it was full of um but that being said yes one thing is i try to start out uh, like back up when i start beginning to learn something as far as i can um even if with my add brain it's not gonna solidify in my memory immediately in the way that it will when pressure is on to learn it um it will get in there there, there are little bits that will, will stay in there, even if you don't think that they're there. And then quite honestly, yeah, I really suggest going on a deep nerd dive. Because if you're working with a really good composer, like if you're one of the greats, then these people know and knew how to tell the story at every level. Um, the orchestra, the, the tonality, the is exactly why I was asking why at the end of Va does Pleza end up in a major key? You know, like why does Kefaro in Orfeo, why is that sung in a major key when he's literally lost his wife for the second time? You know, so going on this deep dive into what is in the score that really supports the story that you're telling with the words, that always benefits me going in. I, I also, I had a wonderful conducting teacher in undergrad who taught us her method of highlighting the score. And so at this point, if you look at opera scores of mine, I've probably spent several days not only just highlighting like my words or something like that, but also going in with a full color coding system of dynamics and uh, accents and all sorts of things. So that when I'm looking at it and hello ADD brain here, here we go again, but like, so that when I'm looking at it, I'm not just looking at the white pages, but I've got a color coded system that seems like when I see that blue, I know that that's piano or pianist. When I see that highlighter pink, I know that's forte or fortissimo. I know that green, those are triplets. You know, like just little things to help you catch on to in the learning process that really give you that when you show the first day of school, like you're good. That com the conductor is gonna be impressed with your preparation. <laughs> and that has never failed to to, uh, to serve me in the best way possible. I love that, thank you. Um, Molly or Kessa, did you have something? Yes, I actually had a question. Um, so I was just curious if you've ever dealt with imposter syndrome and if you had any tips or tricks with dealing or overcoming it. So fun fact, I'm actually president of the imposter syndrome club. Like I run that place, that's, that's, that's mine. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely 1000%. Honestly, particularly from the perspective of a girl who grew up in the middle of the country, like didn't listen to opera. And then all of a sudden, I just managed to line up success and good things, you know, amidst failures as well, but managed to like actually end up in this career. When I know so many people who, you know, I feel should have ended up in this career and didn't believe me yes imposter syndrome is a real thing i will tell you hands down the best way i have figured out how to deal with it is to have another person in my life that i go to when i feel that creeping in who also deals with that and i'm promising you you have peers and friends who also deal with that 
I can see that you do. <laughs> you know, so it's really, I mean, I, I, I'm not even joking. I think that it's actually on the Wikipedia entry that that is. And I have a very dear friend. He used to study at Juilliard as a collaborative pianist. And now he, he switched careers and became a laryngeal surgeon. Um, who is now basically the ENT that the Met uses, uh, and he's my age, and so success has come on really, really quickly for him, and he's one of my dearest friends, and we are like our imposter syndrome buddies, because whenever we encounter situations where every voice in our head is telling us that we don't deserve this, sooner or later people are going to discover that you're a fraud, you know, like all of those kind of messages, I can voice that to a friend who also has that, but who also loves me and wants me to do my work. And that makes such a difference. It really, I, honestly, short of just straight up therapy, which also is a very wonderful thing, I totally, totally suggest it. I also understand that not everybody has the privilege to be able to pay for therapy. I know that I certainly didn't for a long time. The free version of that is having good friends that you can turn to who understand imposter syndrome, but who love you and will tell you the truth. Um, so, yeah. And also just knowing that you are not alone. All, at all, at all, at all, at all, at all. <laughs> like, there are so many other people who have it, particularly in the arts. Absolutely. Very thoughtful questions. Well, I think that's about it, Jamie. Do you have anything you want to say? Um, well, just, I mean, gosh, with, with all of this talent that you guys have in Athens, Ohio, just keep doing the work. That is some of the best advice that I've ever gotten in my life. And in those moments where I find anxiety creeping in or hopelessness about this world or whatever. I have the moment of feeling the feelings and then I remember Joyce Didonato actually was the one who told me she was like, just do the work. Do the work and you're literally just doing the best that you can in the present. And whatever that work means, maybe it's work on yourself, maybe it's work in a score, but just sit down and delve into it and do the work and that always helps pull me out and it always helps push me forward uh, from that place. So I know that we're all living through a very scary time right now, but just keep doing the work. There is literally no, no negative to that. You come out better every single time. So just do that. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. First round of applause. <laughs> Bravi tutti to every singer that sang for me today. Thank you so much for your vulnerability and for the work and your voice. I cannot tell you how much you guys made my day. Grazie. I'll be in touch, Jamie. Bye.